A very good afternoon to you, our cherished listeners. It's always exciting to come your way every Wednesday with your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. It is the 6th of May today and officially the 5th month of the year 2020. And indeed, things have changed for every one of us. But like we always say, that God will give us the grace. And like the President has also said, that this too shall definitely pass. This too shall definitely pass. It does feel good to bring you today's edition of Masterclass right here on your superstation Joy 99.7. Masterclass comes your way every Wednesday at 1.15 p.m. and runs all the way through to 2 p.m. here on your superstation, Joy 99.7. Masterclass is brought to us by Joy Business and powered by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. My name, as always, is Yabanafo, and I am your host for the show. So in the last couple of months, we've been talking about emotional intelligence, if you've been listening to Masterclass, and we spent a wonderful time with our resource person, Mr. James Addison, at the time, he shared some thoughts with us, wonderful indeed, about emotional intelligence and how it affects every aspect, every single aspect of our lives. So we spent quite some time on that. We did that, I think, for the whole month of April and also for the month of March, a better part of the month of March. Today we talk about COVID-19. Everywhere you go, you hear the talk about COVID-19 and how it's come to affect our lives and change our lives forever. Lives have been changed in every sphere of endeavor. And on today's show, we'd like to look at how COVID-19 has affected our lives as entrepreneurs and as business owners. Basically, things have slowed down. People's businesses have slowed down. Things are not happening as they should. Revenues are going down. Some, there, are, there are reports of in some countries and in some places, companies laying off staff, restructuring their entire approach. Because clearly, things are not moving as they should. There has also been restriction on movement. Our discussion today looks at As an entrepreneur and as a business, how are you going to navigate these waters of COVID-19 using e-commerce? E-commerce. I remember that in in one of the releases that the president gave, he said that instead of people moving around to try and transact their businesses, we should look at the alternative of doing these things electronically, electronically. So as a business owner, what are the options and alternatives available to you? How can you transact your business online? These days, you go on things like Facebook, and then you find, let's say, a watch or a belt that you like. You look at it, and they say, purchase now. And I'm wondering, how am I going to get it? So you follow the steps, and then at some point, they say, enter your phone number. And you do that, and they say, okay, do you want to pay now or pay on delivery? And then you click pay on delivery. In 30 minutes, you get a phone call. Somebody says, are you Mr. Kofi Mensa? You say, yes, I am. Um, you've just purchased an item, and um, would like to make a delivery to you. Where can we find you? You find that if you give them directions to where they can find you, in about three hours, that whole transaction is concluded. Is that part of what e-commerce is today? We find out. To help us in our discussion today, we are privileged to have with us in the studio a wonderful gentleman who has spent the better part of his life working both in, should I say, formal and informal (laughs) employment. In the area of e-commerce, he was once the head of digital banking uh, at Fidelity Bank. He now does his own thing. He's the CEO of Global Accelerix Ghana Limited, which I'd like to refer to as an emerging e-commerce solution partner. And uh, he's here with us today. He's going to talk to us about what is e-commerce? How does that become a viable alternative for businesses today, for entrepreneurs? Can I transact that business and save those man hours without necessarily driving to the end of Accra and back? Can I do all of these things without necessarily making money? And, you know, I always like to, to do this. These are the, the, the experts in the field, so they're going to be talking to us. But I'd like to look up a few words. You know, e-commerce, what is e? E is electronic. E is internet. E is, you know, everything that's electronic. What is commerce? We looked up commerce, and I looked at the, at the um, English Oxford uh, Dictionary. Essentially, very simply put, it says, it's the activity of buying and selling, especially on a large scale. You know, so we're talking about trade. We're talking about businesses. We're talking about, and you hear another word, trade. What is trade? I looked it up again in the English Oxford Dictionary, and it says the activity of buying and selling goods. So again, maybe we, we'll ask um, Iris or Sven very shortly what the differences are. But we're talking about business. We're talking about buying and selling. We're talking about your trade. How can you do all of that electronically? Um, I'd like to welcome to the show, Mr. Sebastian Yali. Sebastian, you're welcome to the show. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Yal, and. It's a pleasure being here. Um, I think the topic about um, e-commerce yeah. and, and how businesses can go online is quite interesting. And in fact, I must say, um, looking at what's happening in, in this COVID times, you cannot survive as a business if you refuse to go online. 
if you refuse to change, change will happen anyway, yes. and it will happen without you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Before you go on, Sebastian, I mean, I always like to do this very quickly. I know that a lot of our listeners are, are trying to connect at different levels, and, and so um, we always do this. Who is Sebastian? Who's the man behind the voice? So very quickly, what school did you go to? I don't want uni. I want your, your second, secondary, secondary school. All right. Thank Second, you very much. Yeah. I I am um, I went to Kwabo Tree. Right. <laughs> okay. Do you want to sing a song? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. The other so all the butchery boys, your voice in the studio, right? Uh, yeah. Is that is that something you say? Is there is there a tagline? Is there something you say that they respond? Uh, I think I, I want to sing the for the saints. For the saints. Okay. Not all of it. Sing the last line. <laughs> <laughs> For all the things, for the latest rest. Okay, you will sing the rest of it for us at some point. What can, do you like football? Yes, I do. What kind of team do you support? Local and international. Well, local is um, Accra has a folk and okay. um, international phobia. Chelsea. Yes. yes. Me, I like phobia. Is because of their drama. <laughs> I'm not really a football person, but I like I like their drama. Okay, so for all the all the phobia fans and all the butchy boys. Your boy, Sebastian, is in the studio. Tune in, listen to us. If you're driving, you can also tune your radio. Keep your door locked, locked right here. Sebastian, we want to take as much out of you as possible. I'm not too sure if we can have you here with us next week. But for today, talk to us about e-commerce. I'm a business owner. I've come out of COVID. At some point, I had to even pay my staff, even when they were not working. Mm -hmm. It was a period of, I think, about four weeks or five weeks or so. Businesses are already struggling, and they are cracking at the seams. What is e-commerce? What is channels? How does that help as an alternative to businesses today? Where can they find it? Who is operating it? How do they connect? What are the myths about it? We can't answer all those questions, but generally talk to us about e-commerce and entrepreneurship in these times of COVID. All right. Thank you very much, Yo, and thank you to your wonderful listeners out there. Well, I think e-commerce is basically very simple. You know, as you actually started, you mentioned electronic and commerce so it's these two things that have come together so electronic is basically um making sure you you're moving things paperless and then commerce is obviously business so putting the two together e-commerce is actually doing business electronically and online but e-commerce will not be complete if you just do business electronically and you are unable to make payments so put everything together it's doing business online and executing payment or making payment through several channels you understand so that is e-commerce and it's very interesting now. Um, I think the COVID has actually exposed a lot of things now. Uh, in the past, um, people actually only adopted e-commerce or saw they need to do business online as a way of actually expanding their, their reach. Now, e-commerce or doing business online has become part and parcel of our everyday life. And I was saying to my colleagues in the office that, listen, after COVID, business will not return to normal. So people would have to look out for innovative ways of, of actually doing their business. And everybody is thinking about how do i save cost now um you and i can understand that listen opening branches or setting up offices nationwide in this country is quite big it involves a lot of money now your business is even shrinking customers are actually not buying and i'm sure it will be actually a wrong time to think of going to actually open branches nationwide smart businesses are now thinking of how to take the business online there are several advantages of taking the business online for instance once your business goes online you begin to attract new clientele base. People who hit to would not have come to your shop because people cannot actually come to your shop and they want to shop online. And I'll show you statistics because that is a very big population. But before I go into that, the, the word e-commerce is very simple. Um, now, I just want people to understand the various models or forms of e-commerce. So we have the business to business. Um, we have the business to consumer, the consumer to consumer, and then the consumer to business. The most common ones is actually the business to consumers and then the business to business. I just want to take a few time to just explain to you that business to business is basically one SME doing a business with another SME. So it could actually be um, a manufacturer and a producer or somebody who supplies you raw materials. It's basically the person supplying you the materials and you making payment electronically. So the two of you can actually agree on a price and both transactions are done electronically. Now, um, the business to consumers is, is actually the very common ones where um, businesses offer products and services, and then consumers actually go out there, shop for the products and services, see which ones they like, and then actually make payments um, electronically. So those are the very common ones. There's a consumer to consumer, which is more like peer-to-peer -peer payments. Um, that is actually out there. So um, <laughs> e-commerce is quite big, and it's quite huge here in Ghana. Now, businesses must actually tap into this because currently in Ghana, there are over 10 million 
internet users. Now, by taking your business online and adopting an online channel, straight away, these 10 million customers or use internet users become potential customers to you. Now, um, all over in the country, and this data I'm actually sharing is from the Central Bank of Ghana from their payment systems and services report 2018 that was released. We have over 800,000 internet banking users. So these are people who have access to internet and have been given some sort of accounts by their banks where they can actually go online remotely and do their banking remotely. We have about 5 million cards. So what it means is that banks over the years have issued payment cards to their customers, and these customers are actually willing and able to actually pay online with these cards. You have over um, 13 million active mobile money subscribers. Now, I'm actually sharing this data because that actually shows you the potential out there and shows you the people who have these payment instruments that are actually looking for businesses that are ready to take these, their business online and so they can actually make payments seamlessly. All right, so, so that is by way of how big the, the, the market is. Now, I was actually explaining to you how businesses at this time can actually reduce cost by taking their business online. So um, you realize you're cutting down staff. Now, if you go around opening branches all over the country, you would then have to employ staff who actually man these physical offices and cost. Now you're actually even not making a lot of sales and you're thinking about reducing your cost. Taking your business online is one of the surest ways of doing this. Now, if you take your business online, the truth is that you actually have long hours. The internet never sleeps. And so 24 hours, your business is out there and it's being showcased to people and people can actually make payments to you. Whilst you're asleep, your internet site is earning you money and you're making money, which is not something you get if you actually go with a brick and mortar approach. Um, the next thing is that by allowing customers to go online, you get some valuable data about these customers where you're able to know who has paid you, who hasn't paid, what are the things that they like, and over a period, you actually have this big data that you can actually mine to offer targeted products and services to customers, which is very key and is not readily available if you do the manual approach. Now, um, you have inventory. So, for instance, um, customers in the comfort of their homes, once they order things from your site, are able to track and find out where is my shipment, when is it going to be delivered. And coupled with the fact that we actually have a very good and interesting courier system now, you just order things online, and the next thing is you get a knock at your door, your item has been, has been delivered. Now, opening your business up online as an SME makes you reach a larger marketplace. I've already mentioned that. Now, through online business, you're able to take certain few details about your customers, and you can actually reach out to them and market product and services to them, um, which is quite very good. Now, um, people keep asking, um, all right, so while you, you're actually telling me all the good side of e-commerce, um, what are the limitations? Well, like every good or every nice or sweet product, there's some part of it. I don't really want to call it a limitation, but there are a few things that I think together as an industry, once we're able to tighten these things up, it will make our entire e-commerce experience very nice and smooth. One is platform instability. So you've had people say, yeah, I used XYZ channel, I did a payment, my account was debited, I never got the goods or I never got the money. These are things that service providers and people like ourselves who are in the, into this payment space, we really will need to work out and make sure that we tighten the boat and not to make sure everything is fine. Now, reconciliation and settlement. And, and so you have all these cards paying to you, you have all these Momo, people are paying you via Momo, people are paying you via cards, people are paying via QR codes. The next thing you want to find out, everything put together, how do you get a comprehensive report that shows and showcases all the items that people have paid to you in one single report? And that is one of the challenges that is out there on the market. And I know a few fintechs like Global Accelerator and others in the market are actually trying to put together platforms that can resolve that. Now, um, how long does it take if I have a failed transaction? So the turnaround time for issues resolution. Nobody says there will be no issues, but when the issues happen, how fast are service providers able to resolve these issues just so customers can still gain the trust and um, continue to, to use products? And, and above all, customer education. Our customers need to be educated. It's, it's very common, we, we're here in Africa, and the level of education is not sitting for all people. And so people have different levels of understanding. Payment channels on platforms that allow payments should be made as simple as possible so the ordinary man on the street can actually be able to navigate and complete a payment successfully. These are a few things that I would say once um, as SMEs um, we, we, we are concerned about um, in, in doing business online. Right. Okay. Very wonderful introductory thoughts there. Now let's let's bring the conversation a bit a bit more home. Okay. So let's see. I'm listening to us this afternoon. Mm. I'm excited because I went to Butre with with Sebastian, <laughs> and I'm let's say I'm a spare parts dealer in Abosokai, yeah. and I haven't been able to bring in new stock because I haven't been able to travel and there's a ban on movement and import and all of that. So things have just begun to come in, mm. and I've lost a lot of money because I borrowed from the banks. 
at the time. Maybe some banks have gone ahead and given some reliefs and postponed certain payments and restructuring and all mm. of that. But my business is not doing well, and I'm listening to you. I've never heard the word e-commerce, or I've never tried to understand it. What would be the relationship between e-commerce as a broad topic and channels? Because, you see, we always say the sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. So when we have spoken about the strategy, mm. what do I touch? I touch channels. How do I do my business online? If I'm doing, let's say, a business to consumer. So I'm Kofi Mensa Enterprise. I'm a business. Mm. I'm doing it to a consumer. Let's say, um, uh, what? Kwame. Kwame Ufuri mm. is, a, is a consumer. Kwame has a, a Toyota um, Land Cruiser. Kwame wants to buy shocks. Mm. When I'm selling to Kwame, it becomes me as a business dealing with Kwame as a consumer. Yeah. How do I deal with Kwame? How does Kwame find my product in the first place? How do I tell Kwame I'm here without Kwame necessarily having to drive to Abosokai? It ties in with what you said earlier. The internet never sleeps. Mm. So let's, let's bring it a bit closer home. Using the internet, what are the identifiable different channels through which e-commerce can become available to Kofi Mensa as an entrepreneur? We have Momo. Momo is, is, is one of the <laughs> most popular. There's e-switch. Okay. There's, I mean, you are in the industry. What are some of the, Let's talk about the examples first. Then we'll talk about the various platforms and how people can connect to them and perhaps the advantages of, of connecting to those ones for their business. The general advantage is what you've spoken about, the speed of the ease of trans, uh, transaction, the speed to market. It cannot be rivaled mm. because when you're asleep, your machine is working. <laughs> you know, you have data. You can mine data from search engines, data that you yourself. When you say 10 million internet users, where, who was going to do that data, that research, <laughs> for you to get it? But the internet has that data. Yeah. I mean, today, today, even if you have a Facebook page or a YouTube channel and you broadcast a 30-minute whatever, video. After you've, you've broadcast it, YouTube can tell you how many people watched it, how many people were from Ghana, how many people are from different parts of the country. What, how would the, it can tell you a lot of information, and that is all data engine, research engine, data mind. Mm -hmm. That becomes an advantage. So let's bring the conversation down. What are the various options available or channels available, for example? All right, so thank you very much. Um, the options are, are, are numerous. So, for example, now you have the normal card payment, so that's the online payment, where Kofi Mensa, who is a spare parts dealer, can actually create a website, or I'm sure would get somebody to assist them create a website, a very basic one, and then they actually um, would actually make sure that he actually creates a catalog of his products and services. In this case, it would be shock absorbers, headlights, tail lights, X, Y, Z. And then once you create that, you actually put the prices of these items close to them. So me owning a Land Cruiser sitting in my office know that if I go to Kofi Mensa's shop, I can get a headlight for, say, 200 Ghana CD. Yeah. Now, the next thing I would want to find out is, if I go into Kofi Mensah's website, has he created an option for me to pay? Because typically, Kofi Mensah will not move the goods if payment has not been done. So now there's a need for us to have a payment engine. So Kofi Mensah integrates a payment engine on his portal. So I go online, see the price through the catalog that he's created. I notice that, okay, um, it's 200 Ghana CD. Then I go to the issue of checking out. Now, when I get to checkout, I see the payment option. So I'll see you can pay via Momo. And so I take my phone if I'm a Momo subscriber, I pay. I actually see you pay with a Visa, MasterCard, GH Link, or Eastreach, or whatever card type is there. I choose because depending on the type of card that I have. Or Kofi Mensa says, no, I don't, you don't have any of these things. Maybe um, upon arrival, there's an option to pay on arrival where there's a POS, a physical POS that will actually be brought to you. Or you can actually do a QR payment. So some sort of a QR code is generated for me to scan with my phone and pay. These are all options that Kofi Mensa will actually get assistance from the experts to create these channels. And then people like myself who are consumers, once these options are available, can actually um, utilize them to make payments to Kofi Mensa. So Kofi Mensa would have sold a tail light to me in Obuasi. He never has a shop in Obuasi. By creating that platform or enabling that online presence, I have been able to buy a tail light to Kofi Mensa. And the owners now will rely on the intermediaries who are specialized courier companies who actually work with Kofi Mensa to ensure that that item that I've purchased from Kofi Mensa's online shop is delivered to me in Obuasi. And okay, yeah. beautiful. I'm going to now come back. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm very happy with the, with, the, with the answer you've given. We're now going to try and take a few of the examples you've given and drill down. We're not going to teach how to use Momo today. No, <laughs> it's that one for, it's for the, the, the telcos to do. But we'll talk a bit about, like you said, we'll drill down a bit more on the various things. QR code. Maybe I'm listening for the first time. I have no clue what that is. I walked into a shop last week, mm. and we're trying to make a payment. And the option I was using 
was not working. Then the attendant says to me, sir, would you like to scan your payment? <laughs> and, and of course, they showed me something that has a QR code on mm. it. We're not going to teach, um, you know, these things 101. But what is a QR code? And how does it work? Very simply, for the person who's listening. Mm. Because they know that they have Momo. It's the most easiest thing to use. Mm. What are the other alternatives? There are apps today. If you have an account in any bank, mm. we're not going to give any bank mileage here. But all these banks have applications yeah. which have their logo. Mm. on it. So if you have a bank, just go to your bank and say, Where, help, help, me out to, help me to download your app. Mm. What the app does is that it gives you access to the services, isn't it? Yes. I'm, 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 I'm doing your work for you. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. But let, me, but, let me, but, let me, but let me dwell on a certain point before I come back to that, then I'll leave that for you. When, as you spoke, what came to my mind was that as entrepreneurs who are looking for what can I do, what can I do, what business can I invest in, the beauty of e-commerce is that it, it brings to life what you call the value chain. And, you know, Thompson Chua is one of the persons who have been on our show, and he always talks about the value chain. What is the value chain? So, Kofi Mensa has a spare part. But Kofi Mensa needs to put the spare part out there on the internet. He needs a website. Kofi Mensa's brother is a website designer. He will design the website for Kofi, uh, the first guy. He's made use of a, a graphic designer. Yeah. That product goes out there. Somebody orders it. Somebody has to package it. Somebody has to put it into a transit vehicle or on the back of a motorbike. That's another service, courier. Yeah. He drives it there or moves it there, delivers it. Somebody is also providing the payment channel if it's electronic. Yeah. It puts together a combination of different services and creates more business. Yeah. So I just wanted to put the point out there that e-commerce has not come to cut people's businesses. It's come to enhance it and make it even better. Okay. And it's already happening. Mm. It's just that now when people begin to look at it as one of the major ways of dealing, it strengthens the entire value chain. So that the couriers will now begin to strengthen their, their support. The packaging companies will begin to package it properly. Every intermediary will begin to play their role well. Right. But let's come back to some of the examples. We've talked about Eastway. I mean, you are in that space. Pick two or three of the most popular examples and simply Assume that the person who's listening today has never tried to use it before. How do they use it? Or how do they get to make, take advantage of it, if you like? All right, so I'm just going to pick two of the channels. Yeah. So first one, which is the, the biggest one, which is like wildfire, is actually Momo. So um, obviously, um, once you, you purchase a product or service and you're actually asked to pay via Momo, um, um, you actually go to the menu. And I'm not going to mention any particular service mm -hmm. provider here. You actually go into the menu, um, you dial whatever short code that has been given to you. If you have the app version of the mobile money as well, you can actually have it on your phone. You go to the, you dial a short code, you see options, and then you go to the, uh, navigate to the options, and then you actually get to the place where it talks about payment. And then in the payment, you just select whether it's a consumer payment or it's a merchant payment, and then you select payment, and then it would ask you to enter the, the code of the, of the merchant. Because in that whole space, the merchant will have a reference number, which is more like their bank account, right? So you enter those codes in there, and then you can actually effect payment. If you have money in your wallet, you can actually pay to this person. So that's high level, simple. That is how it looks like. And this is available on almost all the telcos. All the telcos have this. And this is actually available on all the telcos. So if you have a phone number, you're listening to us, you are always used to handling cash, cash. We're talking about COVID. <laughs> notes, notes, money in itself is a, is a point of spread. Start thinking electronic. Go to your telco provider and say, how do I, do you have a payment system on your thing, and every one of them has. Everyone has. How does it work? Ask them how it works. They will help you to be able to. Now, when you are dealing with paying people, paying people for service, paying people for this, you can sit in your home, in your shop, and just do it on your phone, and the other person gets it. I think that one is very publicized in Ghana today. Mm. What are some of the other channels? Well, so the, um, some of the other channels actually are cuts, and that's very common because um, there are a lot of cuts out there. I mentioned about 5 million cuts. Um, so over there, um, on cut side, um, customer has to go to a portal, goes shops into their basket actually move the like basket. facebook or something like that yeah so a portal like a website like a website. facebook alibaba everywhere yeah. anywhere um a merchant has displayed their goods right and in this case the merchant is the spare part dealer right you go in there um, you pick up a few things so you choose that you want a spare part you want the headlight you want the shock absorbers you want the brake light you put everything into a basket once you put all these items into the basket these items have corresponding prices then you move to the checkout mm -hmm. So you actually proceed to check out. Once you get to check out, it will ask you to pay what card types you want to pay with. You choose a card. It will ask you is a Visa, Mastercard, eSwitch, GH Link. You select the card type. 
Then you would be asked to enter the card details. So they actually details that are in front of the cards, which we call the PAN. Mm -hmm. Those of us in the industry, we call the PAN. That's a full, like a 16-digit card number. And then you flip behind the card, you would ask for the CVV. The CVV. You also put in the CVV. And then some the CVV is like, for the benefit of those who don't know what it is, it's like a, a special security code. Yes, special security code. So you enter that as well. Some of them would actually ask you to, to confirm your, um, to acquire, actually confirm your address. You just want to be sure that you've not stolen somebody's card and just want to make a transaction of it. Once you put in the right address, um, if, if the site is enabled for V by V or MasterCard secure code or any form of um, second level authentication, an SMS alert or something will be sent to your phone with a code which you have to input to be sure that the rightful owner is actually the one making the payment. Mm -hmm. The once that is done, your card or in your account will be debited. You actually see that the merchant has received the goods. You find a confirmation message on the screen and then you are home and dry, the merchant will then confirm to you. Some of them will actually include the cost of delivery. Mm. So after the item is there, they will ask you, this item that you've requested to be delivered to you will cost you 10 CDs or 5 CDs extra. That is added to your total, and then you actually make the payment, and then you'll be told when the item will be delivered to you, or a phone number to contact just in case the item is, del is delaying. So this is basically okay. two channels. So you mentioned cards. You mentioned MasterCard. If I have an ATM card, mm. can I use my ATM card to transact or to pay for services on the Internet? Well, so, so first of all, um, you need to be sure that your card is, is enabled for that purpose. And, and, and I mentioned Visa, MasterCard. Um, I know we have our GH Link cards that are also enabled for that as well. So Visa, MasterCard, GH Link, these are the popular cards that we have in the market. And these cards have been able, enabled to accept or to make payments online. And once the merchant is enabled and your bank has actually also configured that cards issued by the institution should be able to make online payments. Your home and drive. Okay, so you're listening to us this afternoon. You're wondering, I want to be able to buy things online. I see these things and they're beautiful. I want to buy them. Can my ATM card do it? Go to your bank today, speak to your relationship person, say, I have an ATM card. The service you offer as a bank, does that allow me to use this card to pay for services on the internet? If it does, then yes, you are home and dry. You don't have to move money around and send people on motorbikes and endanger everybody's life. You can sit in the comfort of your home and make those payments. Yes, go ahead. I even don't like it to be called ATM cards because once we say ATM cards, it narrows the scope to ATM. That's how we know it. Uh, no, but, but, but gradually when, we're changing. When you people started it selling it to us, you, you called it ATM yeah, cards. No, now it's changing. <laughs> now we just call it a bank card. Bank card. And it can do ATM, it can do POS, it can do online. So I think the narrative should change from ATM to, to a payment card. Talk to me briefly about POS. Then we take a quick break and then we come back. POS. We hear the word POS, POS, POS. I have a card. What is POS and how does it work? All right, so POS is simply point of sale. So that is the whole acronym for POS. Now, it's a point of sale terminal, and, and you have a lot of financial institutions out there in the market that have actually deployed point of sale terminal. And, and, and let me just put it on record that the, the online payment is the virtual POS. Mm. And, and the physical POS is the hardware that you and I see in shops when we go into shops and they ask us. We oh, that thing that is on the counter when you have finished picking everything and you and go there and, and you say, I want to pay with my card. And then they, with my they card. bring out that device. That is the, the hard or that's the physical POS. But the e-commerce and the online payments is also a POS, but it's a virtual version of the POS. So we have the online, which is the physical one, and then the virtual one, which is the online. These two are all point of sale. And it's even safer than carrying cash, right? It is. So that if you, if you went out with the family or with, with your beloved or with somebody and you want to have a meal, yeah. when you finish, you, you pay with your card. It's even a flex. It's a flex. <laughs> it's, a, it's a swag. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, I'll pay with my card. <laughs> but you see, oftentimes you also find that the bane of that POS process and I didn't want to start talking about those things now. Um, okay, re react to that quickly for me. Then we'll go on the break and then we'll come back. Sometimes it doesn't work. Well, I Sometimes, think you know, if the card is all you have on you, tell it, you want to do the swag thing, you know, the, the waiter comes and says, um, please, you know, please bring me my bill. And they, they bring the bill, you open it, and, and then you, you take your wallet out, you swipe your card, and you say, I'll, I'll pay, put it on the card. <laughs> Charlie, they go and swipe the card, they come back and they say, and they whisper, when they come and they whisper, they say, your card is not working. <laughs> it's embarrassing. What's all that about? Somebody's listening today, they want to be able to use their POS as a payment option for their services. How do they deal with possible disappointments like this? All right, because so integrity is everything in business. I know, I know. So the moment you say, ship the goods, they've shipped it. The payment is not coming. One day, two days. Master, what's going on? Are you trying to steal from me? How do we deal with that? All right, so, um, so it's fine. So in terms of, I think the largest challenge that people or institutions that deploy these POS have is actually in terms of connectivity. 
Right. And so um, occasionally you have um, network challenges on the POS. Occasionally you might have some hardware challenges on the POS. But for me and for people listening to me, what personally I do is that, listen, I make sure that I am actually hooked up to the various payment options. So you find me having a card on me. I have my Momo wallet funded. I'm able to pay with my QR code. And, and, and I, I'm actually fully sorted. So when I come into any shop and I want to pay, I'm very sure that, listen, I pull out my card as the first option. If there's a glitch, I ask if you have a Momo wallet. I want to pay with Momo. If you say no, I pull out my phone. I say I want to pay with my QR code. People must make sure that they are digitally wired. That's what I want to call right. it. Digitally so, wired. So a number of options. Yes, yes, yes. And then okay. as, um, as a business, you also have to make sure that since the users or the end users actually come out there with these various payment options or payment um, factors, you will also have to prepare your business to be able to accept payment from each of these channels. Mm. Just so if the car doesn't work, um, the, the Momo would work. If the Momo doesn't work, the mobile app would work. And so businesses and consumers must make sure that they are all prepared for the various form factors. Yeah. Interesting indeed. If you just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation. We're spending time in the studio with Sebastian Yali, uh, he was former head of digital banking at Fidelity and is doing his own thing now. We're sharing some thoughts on e-commerce. How do we leverage on e-commerce to help our businesses to grow? We'll be opening the phone lines shortly. Time check in the studio is 47 minutes past the hour when we take a quick break. And when we come back, we continue with the show. The Masterclass is in session, and you can interact with us via Facebook at Joy Business or at Joy 99.7 FM. And if you tweet, the handle is at Joy 997 FM. Don't forget to hashtag Masterclass. You can also send us a text on 1422 across all network or join the WhatsApp conversation on 0244 340437. And our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention, everyone, class is in progress. Right. Welcome back to the show. This is Masterclass here on your Superstation. So do you have any motor vehicle of any kind? Because if you do, we've got some great news for you. Gauss new Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 leaves are the best engine oils for your vehicle. They are specially engineered engine oils which efficiently work on all your modern petrol and diesel engines. They clean, they protect, they reduce fuel consumption, they prolong oil change intervals, and they enhance your engine performance right from when you start up to when you switch off. So go to any Gull filling station today and grab the new Gull Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 engine oils for superior vehicle performance. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. I would like to go straight to the phone lines and get interactive numbers to call. 0302-216-541. That's 0302-216-541. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. What's your experience? Are you already using any of these e-commerce channels? How is it working for you? What have your challenges been like? Would you recommend it to anyone? Let's have a conversation about it. Like we always say, life is too short to make all the mistakes yourself. Help someone else. Teach them what you've learned and let's all become better. And let's make our nation great and strong. Numbers to call 0302216541. If you are driving, please park. Do not text while you drive. You can also send us a comment on 0244340437. I have a caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Hello. Good afternoon. This is Jacob Shen, caller from Kaswa. Good afternoon, Jacob. How are you keeping? I hope you're keeping safe. I'm keeping safe. Good, good. Talk to me, Jacob. Great. Um, I'm so happy with the discussion going on. Right. Because uh, I foresaw it for years, years back. Mm. And I'm already on it. All my services, I received mobile payments. I don't have cash. Mm. But the problem I'm having is, you go to a company like Kenyam. It's at the uh, top Kenyam. They produce plastic containers. Please don't mention their name. They beg. <laughs> but, but go on. <laughs> you need to mention so that they will I have written officially to them mm. to accept mobile money payments. Mm. And they have... Used over four months now. Wow. You go there, you go to the post, and then they print the invoice for you. Then you have to go and cash, remove your mobile money, go outside, cash it, and come and pay cash to them. And come and pay cash. No, and that no, 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 is no. absolutely wrong. It is. You are it a is. company of your such repute. Mm. Mm. And I wrote it. I, I took a paper from the office, wrote it, put in their suggestion box. Nothing has been done. Mm. The second time I went, I called the white guy, told him that, please. Ghana is on digital payment, mm-hmm. and you must accept it. Yeah. And so, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, and after now, they've not done it. Those companies on the industrial area there, what do you call it? Kanesh industrial area there. Yeah. Please, they are a disgrace to the company themselves. Two, go to KKDP. Mm-hmm. You go and buy things, and they don't accept mobile money. You have to go out 
go and find a uh, mobile money vendor, withdraw the cash and bring it. So last week, I told them that if by next week I come, they are not accessible mobile money. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll put them on air that they are a uh, disgrace to the company because it is acceptable. It is legal tender. that mobile money is acceptable. Yeah. We are all going yeah. to get that. Yeah. Why are you refusing to receive accept their mobile money? Yeah. And some companies are doing that. You know what? The shocking aspect is that to carry them, the standard chartered uh, person sitting that he still collects the money. Mm. You go to the booth and I learn that is the standard chartered receiving the money. I tell what? If you are standard chartered wow. collecting the money, you should rather encourage payment, uh, e-cash payment, mobile money payment. Yeah. That yeah. We, we should stop that thing. So people should call out and mention the names of companies mm. who are refusing to accept mobile money payment. Right. Right. That was Jacob there, very, very, very passionate about his thoughts. And indeed, I mean, we're all moving, so change is slow and gradual, but at least let's all try and make our lives easier, because this is where the world is going. Jacob, thank you so, so, so much for your thoughts. We have another caller on the line. Good afternoon. You're welcome to Masterclass. Sorry for keeping you. It's okay. Your name, where you're calling from? Hi. Um, good afternoon. I'm Emmanuel. I'm calling from Slovenia. Emmanuel, I hope you're keeping safe. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Talk to me, Emmanuel. Yeah, so I, I, I'm I liking the conversation, but I want to ask a question. I'm just reading a report currently by um, a Statistica on right. e-commerce. Right. And they are saying that the revenues in e-commerce market amounted to some $2.3 trillion in 2020. Mm. That means there's a great potential over there for tapping. Right. And I'm looking at currently writing a proposal to help develop a new product in that area. Right. But um, during my research, I've found out some challenges with this kind of... Um, transaction i realize that sometimes you make an order online mm. and then the way they package the product very nicely mm. it gets delivered to you and it's a different thing altogether as I in mean, as in it's not what you ordered absolutely right okay you know they, they, it looks like they, they find an ideal way of packaging the product on their site you make an order and it comes to you and it's a different thing mm. uh, i, I want to find out um, from your resource person, yeah. what advice will he give? Because it tends to be a, a disincentive. By all means. You know, By all means. For, for Thank you. That was Emmanuel from Kaswa. How does he deal with situations where. Um, so just write that question down as well. And I've, I've got another caller on the line. But how does he deal with a situation where he orders a product, um, the product shows up, and it's something completely different? I know that all of these online platforms are very, very keen on, on ensuring that performance. Is high and is optimum and there's integrity. So I think every now and again I I see reviews on products and whether you like their service and all of that. So it will be a good place to start. But um, write that question down. We'll take this next call and then um, we'll come back to you. Good afternoon. You welcome to masterclass. Yeah. Following following from the last caller. Sorry. Me, your, I, um, your I, name I, where you're calling from, yeah, sir? My name is Kofi from Tema. Oh, Kofi. How are you doing, my brother? I hope you are keeping I'm fine. safe. And I hope you're fine too. Good, good, good. Talk to me, Kofi. Okay, but just that you don't give us enough time to talk. You know, you open the phone line too late. Kofi, That's forgive fine. me. Oh, I'm, okay. My, okay. My producer okay. is listening. Now, <laughs> I, I, am, I am into technology myself. Right. You know, but I don't even want to buy things online. Follow me from what the last caller said. Okay. You know, and I prefer to rather go to Cancer Cancer Band 2. I'll go to the shop, uh, uh, pick the thing that will fit me because. You buy something, it doesn't fit you. The attitude of the dispatch riders. I, I mm. mean, if you buy mm. anything from Amazon, mm. come on. Once you don't like it, they don't even ask questions. They mm. will accept it. So mm. I want your resource person to also answer those questions. When it right. comes to um, um, some of those business practices, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's one guy who spoke about mobile money and a company not accepting it. Yes. Again, I'm into technology. This was Emmanuel from Kaswa. For me, the charges are just too much. And I want him to also comment on it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to use mobile money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're taking money from your bank. You are paying interest. Mm -hmm. You are taking the money from a vendor. You are taking. You are paying interest. Mm -hmm. You just go and deposit money into your account. You are going to take it. You are paying interest. Every transaction is charged, which mm -hmm. is just too much. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen anywhere in the world. And they are encouraging us all to use mobile money and the bank card that he's saying. Yeah. But then the, uh, the charges. For instance, if I don't go to your banking hall, I mean you are not going to pay a cashier. That are the easiest. Um, tra traffic in your banking hall, but they don't understand it that way in our part of the world. Everyone's just cashing in, and mm. so any company that does or deals in huge sums of money will not want to accept mobile money because of some of these uh, challenges. Right. And 
Uh, to my final point, which I want to reach out to address, mobile, uh, sorry, e-commerce sites, are there any regulations you know, governing their work, or do mm. we use the traditional regulations? Are people who buy things, how, how is the re- re- return policy? How is it supposed to work? I buy this from you. At that one time, I have a guy who bought a shoe. The shoe is a size 41, but I wear 43, and it is my shoe. It's 43. The guy couldn't wear it because it is too long. He couldn't return it. Even the dispatch <laughs> rider's attitude, you mm. know. So, so, I mean, the experience is in the e-commerce terrain. Yeah. Let him answer that question. I Thank will you. do. Thank you so much, Kofi. That was Kofi, very passionate. But I think he's buttressing the point that Emmanuel made from Kasua. Can you just react to that quickly, and then we continue? Okay, all right. Um, I think, um, thank you very much. The, um, the issue about the, um, the packaging, about um, when people buy things online, I think every, um, every, every serious business has gone online to increase their sales. Okay. And you've actually gone out there to make products and services more closer to your customers. Okay. Now, if you're a company and you actually go out there and actually put bad products out there, you are going to get very bad rating and very bad reviews from, from the users. Okay. And people would not want to return to the sites to make payments. In fact, in this era of social media, once people start badmouthing you on social media, your business is gone. So this is a word of caution to service providers, to people who actually offer services out there that, listen, if you actually go out there and give bad service to people and people order things and they don't get what they want now, the whole drive about digital payment is not going to succeed. Mm-hmm. And your whole motive about going online and taking your business to the next level will not be achieved. So okay. Hold, hold that thought for me. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have to make way for, for the next program. But we definitely are going to have you back in the studio. I've got a lot of questions, even on social media. We're going to take down all of those questions. But this conversation definitely has to continue. If you're, if you're listening, you haven't been able to have the opportunity to ask your questions, don't worry. We're going to bring this conversation back. And Sebastian is back here with us next week. We continue. We ask as many questions as possible. This has been Masterclass. We're talking about e-commerce in this period. Um, up next will be the news at 2. Thank you so much. This has been Masterclass on your Superstation. My name is Yabana Fo and we'll see you same time next week.